Hello Super Friends and welcome to DC TV Talk and in today's episode we're going to be breaking down and reviewing Supergirl Season 4 Episode 9, otherwise entitled Elseworlds Part 3, so let's discuss. So of course at the end of part 2 of the Elseworlds crossover we saw reality changed once again and we saw Oliver and Barry get turned into the Trigger Twins from the comics as they were trying to be apprehended by Ricardo Diaz, uh, Joe Wilson and also Malcolm Merlin as cops of the Central City Police Department and this brought us into the new episode, you know, part 3 where we see that Central City is actually being protected by Black Suit Superman. So the first thing I want to talk about about this episode is Tyler Hecklin. I mean, I've said this before, you know, many times on DC TV talk, but I, I love Tyler Hecklin. I love him as Superman. I think he's absolutely outstanding. And I think, you know, this goes not just for this episode, but the whole crossover. I think he's been fantastic. And especially seeing him playing evil Superman in this, black suit Superman, is really awesome and i have to say as well i didn't actually expect what they were doing here because when we knew black suit superman was coming obviously there was a lot of questions about well who is this black suit superman how does he exist where does he come from and what i thought was really clever here is that he actually it actually is jeremy davis like it actually is dr john deegan he's just literally turned himself into superman so i thought that was actually really interesting and actually is in line with the character because in episode two of the crossover he said you know when he was talking about how he changed reality he said well i could have turned myself into the flash and you can see that he wants to be a hero and this is what he did he turned himself into superman but with a black suit and i thought that was actually a really clever twist and something that actually worked well with the character now one of the sort of negatives i have in this episode is uh kara is captured on this she's kept in the pipeline in star labs and she comes face to face with alex danvers now this is weird because alex this is the earth one alex um so this does confirm that there is an alex on earth one uh but there isn't a kara on earth one so this was kind of like just like a a pointless kind of conversation like if there was a car on earth one then it would have made more sense but that like from what we know there isn't a car on earth one like they said that like, a pod never landed on on earth one so i don't quite know what the relevance of this was other than just to have alex in the episode i mean i think Charlie lee did a good job and i think you know her character turn was kind of interesting but it was very very quick though um but yeah i just felt having alex in this was kind of unnecessary you know out of all the supergirl characters to have in this this was probably the wrong one However, I absolutely loved Carlos Valdez as evil Cisco in this. Cisco is just this overly eccentric kind of gangster in this. Um, he was fantastic. Like, I didn't know that Cisco could play a villain that well. Like, we've seen him do evil before. Like, in season two, he was like evil vibe. Like, I think he was called Reverb. Um, there was that. And, you know, we've seen a lot of different versions of Cisco. Even Barry references that. You know, he said he's met a lot of different versions of Cisco. And we have seen a lot of them. And this is one of my favorites. Like, he was really funny. Um, I mean, Cisco is obviously very funny anyway, but this guy was very sarcastic, very sure of himself, um, kind of no nonsense kind of thing. And I thought he was very entertaining and he worked very well. And the fact that he could also vibe as this version of, of Cisco, I thought was very cool. Uh, also, Mechard Brooks gets a little bit of screen time here as well. That's, of course, James Olsen from Supergirl. Uh, he's basically his bodyguard, essentially, uh, and works for Superman. Um, and that was cool. I liked seeing James in this crossover. He got about as much screen time in this as he normally gets on a Supergirl episode, which I would have liked to have seen him get a little bit more. But, I mean, for the past couple of years, like, James had, like, a little cameo in Crisis on Earth-X as well. He was, like, the Earth-X guardian. He had a fight with the Earth-X Oliver. So, you know, Mechard Brooks, he always gets, like, a little role, and I like that. Now, we knew in this episode that we were going to be getting a cameo from a character from Legends of Tomorrow, and I was speculating about who this character could be. I was like, it's probably got to be like Sarah or Ray. It's got to be one of them two, you know, two of the main ones. Uh, but then when the episode was beginning and I saw all the names popping up, I saw the name of Adam Checkman, who is the actor who plays Gary. And then it clicked. I was like, of course it's Gary. This crossover has been so heavily influenced by memes. You know, Gary is literally a walking, talking, living meme. Like, out of all the characters in the Arrowverse, Gary is probably the one who fits into this crossover the most. So, you know, when I actually saw Adam Checkman's name, I was like, of course Gary's in this. Um, and he basically is just Gary. Like, there's nothing different about him. He's just Gary. Um, and even on, like, the, the Legends Twitter account, they put out, you know, get Gary's always the same in every reality. Um, and yeah, I mean, Gary's always great. I, I personally love Gary. Um, even though he's been a bit much this season for me on Legends, I think he's been showing up a bit too much. I still like his character. It was fun to see him in the crossover. 
So we have this thing that actually happens where Superman is actually able to get his hands on the Book of Destiny and he is able to rewrite reality uh, back to the way it was. So Barry now is Barry Allen the Flash and Oliver is now Oliver Queen the Green Arrow. This was really awesome just to get them back to normal again and then they get to take out everyone else who was in there. Like we actually get to see that Diggle is working for um, the Black Suit Superman. So is Killer Frost, which is really cool. And obviously so is Alex. So they get to take all of them out and then they go back to normal. So we're ready, so we're ready for this final fight. Now, the final battle of this crossover was really cool. We had Superman versus Black Suit Superman versus Oliver Queen versus Barry Allen versus Supergirl. And we even had Martian Manhunter come in. We had Brainiac 5 come in. So we had a big battle against Black Suit Superman. And I thought this fight was really, really cool. There's a lot of awesome moments within it. I thought it worked really well for these, to, for all these characters to fight, you know, a Superman because Superman is pretty powerful. Um, what I really liked, though, was the fact they actually got Jon Jones involved, Martian Manhunter, because I've always said this, but why have they never gotten Jon involved? Involved. like Jean is so powerful I mean obviously that's the reason why they don't is because he's too overpowered but still like you know when they're facing these big threats surely Kara would be like oh yeah I've got a mate who could help us out and you know so in this crossover they actually bring in Jean which I was really happy about I like seeing that and Brainiac vibe as well I'm loving Brainiac this season on Supergirl so to have him come in um he gets barely any screen time he kind of comes in flies away and then comes back um but it was still nice to have Brainy you know just to have like a bit more Supergirl characters in the crossover because Supergirl is normally the short end of the stick when it comes to the crossovers uh, so it was nice to actually get some characters from Supergirl in this crossover. And in this final fight, I think it worked really well. So after all of this goes down and everyone starts to go back to their normal lives, we do get to see back at the Fortress of Solitude, we get to see uh, Clark Kent actually propose to Lois. Um, I thought this was really nice. I thought this was a nice little moment, nice little scene. Also, we do find out that uh, the secret that Clark was going to tell Kara in part one is that Lois is pregnant. So what is happening is Clark and Lois are actually going to go back to Argo in order to, have, you know, for the pregnancy, which means that Supergirl is the only, you know, superhero left on Earth 38. Um, so she's kind of protecting the whole planet uh, while Clark is on Argo with Lois. And this means that we are getting Superboy. I don't know if that will be involved in the future at some point, but still really cool. Um, it, this basically is, you know, it, you know, I guess if people are going to bring up the excuse of, oh, well, why doesn't Kara just call Superman when she needs help? At least for the next nine months, we know that, uh, <laughs> that Superman's up on Argo City. So, you know, I guess that's just the writers uh, sorting themselves out there. Now, the final little teaser for the end of this crossover absolutely blew everybody's minds. I mean, I'm sure you all know what this is, uh, but we see uh, Batwoman actually call Oliver and say, oh, is this guy of yours, Dr. John Deegan, is he going to be a problem? And uh, he's like, oh, what are you talking about? And she says, well, he's made a friend in prison. And we see that in prison, he has actually become friends with Psycho Pirate. Now, Psycho Pirate was in part two. And if you remember back to my review of part two, I said that I found Psycho Pirate very disappointing because they made such a big deal about him being cast and he had absolutely nothing to do in the episode. And he still has nothing to do in this crossover overall. What he purely is here for is to set up the next crossover. He says, worlds will live and worlds will die. And then the logo pops up and says, Fall 2019, Crisis on Infinite Earths. We are getting Crisis on Infinite Earths as next year's crossover. A lot of us have been speculating about this. You know, we've been saying, are they setting up Crisis? Is this what they're doing? Is this what they're hinting towards with all these different characters and things like that? But yes, they are finally going to be doing Crisis on Infinite Earths next year as the 2019 crossover. This is huge news. Um, I'm so, so excited about it. It's brilliant. I'm sure you've seen loads of people talk about this on Twitter and on YouTube already in, in this community. But the fact that they're doing crisis is huge this is one of the biggest storylines in the history of dc comics and i am so ready for it overall though i think part three may be my favorite episode of the crossover i won't lie to you which is very surprising given the fact it's a supergirl episode um but i thought this episode was really good i think it wrapped everything up really well i liked all the stuff with cisco and the trigger twins i thought the trigger twins was really funny um again i think the black suit superman was awesome the final fight bringing in carrie you know that was really funny and bringing in all the supergirl characters i just think that this was a really good wrap up and obviously that tease at the end is absolutely mind-blowing um i thought it was fantastic and my overall thoughts on elseworlds like as a crossover i probably will do like a full kind of review where i pick up all the points like major points from e all the episodes um but just give you my quick overall thoughts on elseworlds um i really enjoyed it i really liked it i didn't love it like i didn't love it as much as i've liked invasion or crisis on earth x i think this one is weaker than the blast 2 
but I think it is better than Brave and the Bold and Heroes Unite, so it's kind of in the middle for me. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's really fun. Um, it just didn't really have much weight to it. It didn't really have much substance to it. It was kind of just like, oh, we have an idea and we have loads of fan service and let's just do it without actually writing a very intelligent story. Um, so yeah, it, it's fun, but it is kind of fluff. But, you know, these crossovers are for the fans. And as a fan, did I enjoy it? Absolutely yes. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. It'll help me out a lot. And share this video with anyone and everyone you know who loves DCTV and get them to join the community. And as always, guys, please subscribe for your latest content on Supergirl, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and Arrow. And with all that said, guys, hope to see you again in my next video.